Hey everyone, Leo is here, back with another episode of Jumps on Lightning. I have Vincent here with me to talk to me about a super cool topic, unified namespaces. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Leo is here, back with another episode of Jumps on Lightning. I have Vincent here with me. Vincent, how are you doing, my friend? I'm really good, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm excited to have you, Vincent. I've been seeing all the things that you've been working on, um, and that's why I wanted to have you on the show. But before we go and do that, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, I'm Vincent. So uh, I'm passionate about technology since I'm a small kid, and I was kind of born with a screwdriver in my hand. And uh, I did mechanical engineering studies and also combined with a master degree in in artificial intelligence. So uh, I like fabricating, uh, creating stuff. So either physically or digitally. We're all about creating stuff. Uh, Vincent, you know, today I wanted to talk to you about some interesting topics that you've been developing. Uh, you know, you and I have been talking a bit uh, before, uh, before the show. And um, I wanted to get your thoughts on this concept and ideas around, you know, what you like to call unified namespacing in the context of industrial IoT. So. Um, talk to me about this. Like, what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? What, what, what is it that we're here to talk about today? Yeah, sure. So I prepared a presentation here. So let's assume we are the CEO of Ionix Car. The CEO of Ionix Car, uh, Jane here, she wants to see the global vision of her own company and to see all the departments and, and visualize instantaneously what uh, is happening. So in green here, it's her company and also the impact of the subcontractors and other uh, born in the cloud uh, media. Mm -hmm. So how, you know, how do you go, like, obviously, you know, this, this space of industrial IoT and IoT in general, you know, evolves a lot around the data. Mm -hmm. So when you think about data and you're thinking about all the, this concept that you've been, you've been developing, where does that meet you? So the data usually in, in companies, in large companies, the data is what we call in silo. So here we see many departments and within, even within the same department, we have got many silos. And sometimes it's by definition because the, for example, production department, we create cars, for example, and it is uh, with the standard ISA 95, for example, uh, by default, we've got a lot of silos, which means the data has to flow from one point to another point to another point. It takes mm -hmm. a long time. So, and the quality sometimes is not there, which means Jane cannot have the information in real time for, not for jokes. Sometimes it takes one month, two months, six months to get some of the data out uh, of the department. Okay. So, so how do you go and solve problem? That? Yeah. So how we solve that industry 4.0, we've got here, for example, the usual scope of industry 4.0 uh, resides in the, the factory oftentimes, but this is the usual scope. If we take a broader vision, we are interested in the systemic vision, which means we will have better impact and more savings. So the data should flow everywhere that uh, is around what we see here, so that Jane could take uh, better decisions and save not millions, but billions of dollars. So I like the uh, the term crack the system. Show me, mm -hmm. you know, what do you mean by cracking the system? So cracking the systems is like, for example, uh, Airbnb. You've got a regular hotel that, uh, that you arrive in and so on and so forth. Airbnb, you have to think, oh, maybe if I, I rely on other people, uh, I will make, I will generate revenue. So cracking the system could be apply to the industry here, a real life systems is that, for example, we've got a warehouse and the warehouse, it's uh, storage. We, when we store things, it costs a lot of money. So in a car company, sometimes the salesperson, he will sell a car, of course, but we still have got a lot of um, cars in the warehouse. And if we just crack the system saying, oh, instead of the salesperson selling regular car, let's put the salesperson in the warehouse and sell the, the elements within the warehouse. So that's just moving one person from uh, one place to another. That's cracking the systems. It's nearly uh, no cost, but it will affect 
affect uh, considerably the mm -hmm. the revenues because we've got no no big warehouse and it's cheaper mm -hmm. and okay. it could save millions that's a uh, return of uh, that's uh, so yeah, let's talk that's... about unified namespace in here mm -hmm. um yes where where does that meet us so unified namespace will allow us to get the global vision instantaneously in real time so maybe i can talk about the origin of unified namespace sure yeah so the origin is uh what we've got here it's uh, walker reynolds back in 2003 uh, he was working in a salt mine and back at that time the salt mine is large so instead of running back and forth and uh, traveling and to to verify that the equipment is still working properly uh, the clever idea he got is to put some excel files here and there at critical uh, position within the mines uh, under the surface and the interesting thing is that he connected them all all the excel files uh, into a super uh, vision file the main supervision excel file and as you know excel you could from this um, main supervision you could do uh, a3 the cell a3 equal surface uh, file and we will get the data from for example the the i don't know the the motor and then of course if the motor changed the the consumption of electricity here for example instantaneously the information um, will flow directly into the main supervision file and the same thing happens with the underground files so we've got a kind of um, ubiquitous um, data so we have got here the uh, the single source of truth because if we've got one change here it will change directly uh, at the main supervision got it okay so how should we how should we solve for this like this looks like you know a central database like how sh you know what's the approach that we are advocating for here yeah so the approach is that uh, uh, when we change somewhere it propagates the information everywhere so that's what we we will do uh, that we want to have here in uh, in a real factory so in a real factory we've got the jungle uh, kind of jungle of kind of data so which means we've got uh, many softwares sap we've got a uh, neuron udu and so on and so forth so the same thing happens uh, as the the salt mine when we've got information here in germany uh, that changed it will affect all the nodes and uh, jane here in the middle could see all the changes so that's really interesting and we use many technologies to do that and today i'm going to show the the example so uh, in terms of the maturity of this model right because this is like a decentralized model in so so to speak right mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, what are your thoughts like, here? Mm -hmm. uh, very often people will say, yes, uh, I know these systems here. You talk about MQTT. I use MQTT since uh, 1999 because it was invented back then. Uh, it's Yes, it's MQTT, but uh, first of all, we've got many versions of MQTT. And it's the usage of MQTT that is different. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of people got it wrong when they say, OK, I know it. I know UNS. But uh, I will try to demonstrate uh, the sure. difference here. Please. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, before that, I, I wanted to remind or to, to clarify something. Uh, for example, here, I put the laser dot here. Uh, oftentimes, people are doing IoT or they do, I call that regular IIoT, industrial IoT. But for example, Renault, Renault uh, did a jump into the step five of maturity of the maturity and to reach a step five it has to move from regular iot which means you put sensors in the factory and then you gather the data after that you get frustrated because the data cannot flow rapidly enough uh, back to i don't know to jane for example uh, so she could take uh, decisions uh, so what for example renault group did they put in place 
uh, UNS, Unified Namespace. They don't call that UNS, it, but it's very similar. And from that, it's uh, for them uh, jump to the fifth uh, level so that Renault could see everything like uh, what I, I explained earlier on. So that's the, the demo that I'm going to present here. Usually we, uh, for the demo, we've got a mini factory here, but because it's quite big uh, for today, uh, I dismantle everything so that we will see under the hood of uh, this uh, mini pedagogical factory. Uh, let cool. me just introduce the, the thing. So we've got uh, on the both side, the edge computer here, a massive computer. Usually it's, uh, you, put, you can have a hammer and hit it. It's uh, robust. So today we'll have here the computer. We've got uh, on the OT side, we've got a, a gateway here. So we've got uh, the gateway here too, that will convert uh, various protocols so that we don't have any more the jungle. And we, we unify all the, the data here. And before that, <clears throat> an example of um, provider of telemetry of, uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, for example, uh, we call that a PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, using the OPC UA uh, protocol. So that's uh, the, the example <clears throat> that I'm going to show here with uh, this demo. Okay. Um, so expired, so let me connect up here. So what we've got here, it's real life, it's not a picture. We've got the PLC here, program programmable logic controller. We've got inputs and outputs. Outputs are here and the red lights are outputs. Those are inputs. It's not usual inputs, it's OPC UA inputs. So it, it follows some, some hierarchies of data. Mm. So here I've got everything at zero. So if we look at the screen, we've got zero here, input. So now let's put uh, eight plus two. Eight plus two, we've got 10 here. And also within, uh, let's say a few seconds, we've got 10 here. Why? Because here we've got we are on the web server, so local host, whereas here we've got a, a heavy duty um, Windows application. So we see here, we've got uh, the LED on, we've got a fan. I'm going to change the output of the PLC. The PLC here, we notice that I can change physically here, but I can change digitally here also. I will change digitally, I put one. Let's see what's happening, one. If we see here, it turns uh, number one here. It's not really clear, but uh, uh, it's one here and the one triggers the fan. If I put two, it will turn on the light and number two displays here. Of course, if I say three, three is one plus two. It does the two here, fan plus light. Uh, I will turn off because it's quite noisy. And if I put zero here, on the output register, now it's zero and zero. So that's a kind of basic um, mini unified namespace uh, because here we can change, we can affect here the truth. The truth, the truth is 10 at the moment. I can put the truth at, I don't know, I put back at zero plus uh, zero plus uh, four. So physically it's four here, it's four on this application, it's four on this application. And normally it's going to be four on other application here. So this is a high MQ. This is the cloud. I'm on the cloud and on the cloud too. So if we remember the, the big picture that we've got, uh, we have got many inputs. So SAP, we've got uh, whatever, the jungle, uh, as I said. And Jane is in the middle. Here she got the cloud and she could see the, the data. Of course, Jen, she doesn't care about all those uh, big numbers. It's, it's, uh, it's quite, kind of scary. So Jen wants uh, to have globalized um, KPIs. So that's what we, we are going to see uh, later on. So this is a, a summary of what we see here. We can have uh, robot arms, we can have painting zone, we can have many things. Some of the data will be 
um, will be transported using Modbus uh, protocols, some of them MQTT, some of them mm -hmm. OPC way, and so on and so forth. So, and at the end of the day, we see here the MQTT. So that's what we saw earlier on. When I change something at the, um, at the ARM level, and instantaneously the data will flow and arrive here so that Jane could see the data on, for example, uh, Grafana, SAP, uh, data lakes, uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, is that uh, clear? I think that, uh, you know, I think that the, the interesting piece here, and, you know, we, we talked about this in, in previous episodes when, uh, mm -hmm. when we talked about the, the, the concept of contextualization, um, it's always interesting to see the level of contextualization you can have. And I think that it's always a recurrent theme, which is what is the business logic you can extract out of complex operations? Um, and I wanted to, uh, you know, this is a cool demo, Vincent. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you a question mm -hmm. with regards to UNS. Like, how do you see this in the real world? Uh, what are the, you know, what are the use cases that you think that this will be most beneficial? So the, the real cases is when, for example, we've got factories, uh, this is the, the current project, we've got factories with low bandwidth, internet bandwidth. So the factory has to survive with internet disconnections. And with that, we, here we, we can see, well, I did zoom, we can see that, um, oh, up, sorry, uh, we can see here that the edge computer, so the, the black box that I had, is connected to AI machine learning here. And this machine learning at the very beginning came from the cloud. So we trained the, the AI in the cloud. We send that back to this edge. So the machine learning will be able to tell the factory what to do when, even if we don't have any more internet for let's say even one day or two days. So that's really important. Uh, it seems a bit a gadget, but uh, we are for our customer. They are saving millions of uh, dollars per year just doing yeah. that. So it's really yes. important. Super cool. I don't think it's a gadget. I think that you know, at the end of the day, uh, the the era of harvesting AI, you know, for the greater good mm -hmm. in terms of either, you know, in this case, like factory floor, but you can definitely see this. You know, in pharma, I see this in agriculture. I can definitely see the, you know, the benefit out of of such a such a model. Vincent, I wanted to uh, tell you, thank you so much for uh, joining me for this show. I always enjoy, you know, seeing this type of cool, real demo. And for the jumps of lightning, thank you so much for watching. Happy 2025, and we're gonna see you in the next one. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye.